and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that doesn't understand how anybody could think that the holodeck would be an effective storytelling device for Star Trek The Next Generation. I mean, really, that was just dumb. Anyway, uh, speaking of science fiction and outer space, I want to talk to you today all about a game about building space and uh, uh, colonies and starships and space combat. I'm talking about... Brown. Imperial Stars 2 from Victory Point Games. Imperial Stars 2 from Victory Point Games is a space combat game. It's a war game set in the cold, cold reaches of outer space. Each side takes their own particular fleet, and then on your turn you have these different shits that are numbered uh, 4 through 8.3. I'll explain that to you in a minute. Uh, but what you're going to do is on your turn you're going to mix those up, and you're going to grab one of those, and that will tell you how many operations points you get that turn. And operation points then are used for things like moving your fleet, uh, things like building star bases, things like just uh, generally causing problems for your enemy in general. Now you're going to go through every turn and select one of these randomly. You won't know which one it is. If you, you, know, you draw the four, you get four actions, five, five, etc., etc., etc. Now, if you pull the 8.3, that means you can either have eight operations points, or you can only have three operations points, but you can build a star base. And that's kind of important, because what you're going to do is you've got these fleets. And the fleets have stats on them, movement, uh, uh, you know, combat value, etc., etc., and they're moving around the uh, board. Now, what's going to happen is, once they get to a planet, there's a, a marker there that you can take if you colonize that planet. You colonize the planet simply by flipping your spaceship over to its colony side. Now, you flip it over to its colony side, suddenly that is your colony. You also have to pay for your colonies. The distance between this new colony and one of your other colonized worlds, or a star base, you have to pay that distance in operation point uh, value. So it kind of is a good thing to build star bases kind of closer to some of those uh, far out worlds, so you don't have to pay as much as an operations cost. Now, also in this game, combat is very important. This is, after all, a war game. So what's going to happen is, whenever you and your uh, opponent do battle, you're going to move into the same uh, space. Uh, on your turn, you move into another opponent's space. And then, during the combat round, combat ensues. Combat is played uh, over a series of steps. The first step is, if you're playing it over uh, somebody's colony, they can actually flip their colony marker over, turn it back into a starship, and fight you uh, with that starship and any other starships they have there. Then, any triangles located on your chits, on your units, are fighters, and your fighters attack. You roll the die for your fighters, you consult a chart, you see if you score hits. Then you have beam weapon attacks. These are essentially the big guns on the, st on, the, on the battleships, the capital ships firing at each other. Again, you add up your combat strength, you roll, and you consult a chart to see what kind of damage you do. Then, assuming you have ships with fighters that survive, you have another final fighter step. So, pretty straightforward, pretty easy, little, quick uh, combat system there. The winner's the last guy standing, though there is options for retreats uh, in battle as well. The winner is the first person to capture their enemy's homeworld, or, at the end of the game, the person with the most uh, points in colonies and what have you. Now, that's interesting, because the game ends when you have expended all of your operations chits, but you don't just use them all and then they're done. You use them all, then you advance to another round where you have to remove the lowest one, so you remove the four. You play again, then you remove the five. You play through them again, you remove the six, all the way there until you just have uh, one left. and. So it's very interesting. You, there's, a, there's a running clock in this game you have to be aware of when you play uh, Imperial Stars 2. So what do I think of Imperial Stars 2? Well, a um, couple of things. First of all, this comes with two double-sided paper game boards. Now, they, they look good and, you know... They're functional. They, they have different terrain on them, which is cool, which affects the game. Uh, you know, asteroids, nebulae, things like that. And that's pretty cool, too. Um, but they are paper mats. And I really like Victory Point's puzzle maps. I think they're so much fun to, to put together and play with. Um, I, I wish it had those. But I understand. This has got, uh, you know, like I say, two double-sided uh, paper boards. So there is some variety there, but they're paper boards. So that is what it is. Um, generally speaking, however, this is a pretty uh, fun, intense, clever, quick uh, space war game. Now, I love science fiction games. I love science fiction games. I love playing uh, uh, you know, deep, strategic war games. I recently played a game of Twilight Imperium, one of my favorite games. I love the complexity of the game. This isn't that complex, but it's still fun. It still packs a punch. Uh, it's, it's, like I said, it's pretty light, pretty straightforward, and it gives you that real 
space theme feel. So fans of kind of science fiction war games, I think you're really going to get a kick out of this game. Now, I was playing this game um, with my friend Darren, and Darren is like me. He loves science fiction games, and he said to me that if this were a little bit more complex, he'd probably get the same kick out of this that he gets out of Twilight Imperium. Now, I don't know about that. But Darren really, really, really loved this game. I liked it a lot. He loves it. Um, it is. It's fun, quick. I think it plays in, you know, about an hour. So it's, the, the, you know, if you're looking just for that quick, fun space experience, I think you'll get a kick out of this. So this is a no-brainer for the uh, Discriminating Gamer. Our recommendation here is buy it. Thank you so much for watching The Discriminating Gamer. We really appreciate you tuning in. Please, please, please like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Now, go forth and spread the word of The Discriminating Gamer. Please somebody help.